Hi, my name's Anna. I'm a respiratory therapist. My name's Jackie. I'm one of the pediatric resident doctors. And I'm Luke. I'm a pediatric nurse, and we're part of a team here at Golisano Children's Hospital talking to you about how to use inhalers with a spacer. When the video is done, you will know how to help your child get the right amount of medicine to manage their asthma, and keeping your child feeling well and healthy is our goal. This is one example of a metered dose inhaler, also called an MDI inhaler or puffer. It sends medicine into your child's lungs. Whenever an inhaler is used, you must use a spacer with it. Here is an example of what a spacer looks like. Without a spacer, the medicine can't get all the way into the lungs. Your spacer might have a mouthpiece like this one, or your spacer might have a mask like this. Your doctor will help determine which one will work best for you. It is important that you know about the two main types of inhalers. Although they may look similar, this one is a rescue inhaler and this one is a controller inhaler. You'll use the rescue inhaler on a scheduled basis as needed. Sometimes you will use the rescue inhaler more when you're having trouble breathing. You'll use the controller inhaler one or two times a day. It usually contains a special medicine called a steroid. This helps to reduce the swelling in your airway. Use all medicine as instructed by your provider. If you are using the inhaler for the first time, it's important to prepare it for use. Start by looking at the expiration date. If it is expired, it will not be as effective and should be replaced. You will need to prime the inhaler before using it on your child. Shake the inhaler in the upright position. Release one puff from the inhaler Pause for 30 seconds and shake again. Repeat this until the recommended number of puffs have been released, as per the manufacturer's instruction, waiting 30 seconds between each puff. If you have not used your inhaler recently, you will need to reprime it every few days to weeks. This is especially important with the rescue inhaler. Check with your specific inhaler's instructions to find out how often this should be done. Most inhalers have a counter to signal how many doses are left in the inhaler. Once the counter has reached zero, the medication is gone and the inhaler should not be used. It is important to have active medication inside the inhaler. If no counter is present, tracking the remaining doses can be done on a piece of paper. To use the inhaler with the mouthpiece in your spacer, shake the inhaler in place in the back of the spacer. Have your child blow all his air out and seal your lips tightly around the mouthpiece. Begin breathing in and release a puff of medicine from the canister. Continue breathing in as deeply as you can. Hold your breath and slowly count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If a second dose of medication is required, Wait one minute and repeat. If you hear a sharp whistling sound, slow your inspiratory breath down. This will allow for better dispersion of the medication. To use the inhaler with a mask in the spacer, have your child sit upright or support your child in a sitting position. Shake the inhaler in place in the back of the spacer. Place the mask on your child's face, taking care not to get the top of the mask too close to your child's eyes. Press down on the spacer, inhale the medication in. Let the child breathe in and out four to six times before removing from the face. If a second dose of medication is required, wait one minute and repeat. Wiping off the mask and face with a wet washcloth will help prevent irritation of the skin. After using your inhaler, rinse your mouth out with a sip of water or brush your teeth. If this cannot be done, wiping the inside of the mouth with a wet washcloth is sufficient. This is especially important if using a steroid or a controller inhaler. Rinsing the mouth helps prevent hoarseness and fungal infections like thrush or yeast infections. If you are taking more than one inhaled medication, it is important to take them in the correct order. 
Rescue inhalers such as albuterol or zopinex are bronchodilators and are usually taken first to open the airways and allow other medications to be inhaled deeper into the lungs. Controller medications, steroids, should then be used with the same technique. Spacers should be cleaned once a week. They should be placed in a sink with warm and soapy water. You're going to want to undo the mask or mouthpiece from the holding chamber and disassemble the spacer. Shake vigorously in the water and rinse all parts in clean water and let air dry overnight. Do not allow metal canister from the inhaler to become wet. If the medication begins to clog the hole on the inhaler dispenser, a dry Q-tip can be used. Inhalers are sensitive to extreme hot and cold, so you should not leave inhalers in places such as a car. Likewise, excessive moisture may cause buildup on the inhaler canister, which will not allow the medication to be delivered properly. In this video, you have seen how to properly use and care for your inhaler and spacer. If you have any questions, please contact any member of your healthcare team. Thank you for watching.